Thank you, Rusine. Uh, before I get to my presentation, I've got to do a shout out for my club, uh, just so you can understand the perspective. Apex Sunrise Rotary Club has about 30 members. We're only six years old, and we've done the Peak City Pig Fest for five years. Over those five years, we've raised over $200,000 wow. for charity. Wow. Uh, Tell people, and Bill McLaurin, where's Bill? Right. Bill knows because Bill was instrumental in getting our club started. Uh, we have an attitude, and our attitude was pretty much we don't do bake sales. So uh, <laughs> we, we think big. So anyway, but I'm, I am happy to be here today uh, to um, tell you a little bit about uh, press secretary. Let me tell you, first of all, Rusine mentioned that um, I was at the Department of Commerce. I was very happy at the Department of Commerce <laughs> and uh, was, was kind of minding my own business over there, and obviously it had a chance to to work with the governor on, on various economic development announcements. And one day I got a phone call, said the governor would like you to come to the mansion to talk about being his press secretary. Well, when the governor says come to the mansion, you come to the mansion. Um, I, I tell the story, I was supposed to meet him in the library and I, I got there first and, and um, sat down in a chair. And a couple of minutes later, Thomas Stith, the uh, chief of staff came in and said, you might want to sit in the other chair because that's the chair he likes to sit in. I said, got it. So I spent about an hour and a half with the governor, and uh, that night they offered me the job. So then I had to ask my wife, Tina, if I could, if I could take it. So, um, so let me just tell you a little bit about um, what, um, what our, number one, our press office does, and then what I do as press secretary. First of all, we're responsible for all the external communications for the governor's office. So you're talking about press releases. Uh, we also are the ones that develop his uh, speeches. We also handle social media for him. Uh, we coordinate press conferences or avails. Um, any media interviews come through us if uh, someone is interested in, in having um, an interview with the governor. Again, we write and distribute all of his press releases. And then uh, we also interact daily with uh, all of the various communications folks in his cabinet offices. Um, each, of, each of the cabinet departments has a communications person that, who we deal with uh, on a daily basis uh, so that we can make sure that We've got the, the, a consistent message coming through and things that they're doing. Uh, what I do as uh, the press secretary for the governor is I serve as one of the lead spokespersons for the governor. Uh, I handle press calls. I travel with the governor um, and, when, and staff a lot of his appearances. There's about three of us who travel with him on a regular basis. We've got to take turns. Um, obviously, part of my job is to just update the governor on uh, relevant media issues. Uh, it's not unusual for him to, to pick up a phone or, or to, uh, to, to drop by the press office sometimes. He, he dropped by last week and hung around till like 7 o'clock and none of us could go home because we weren't going to go home when the governor was there. Um, we, we again uh, write his speeches for him, not that he always uses them, um, but uh, I'll tell you one thing about the governor. He actually is, is really, uh, really good at grasping a message. So a lot of times he'll, he'll grab what we've written, he'll flip through it, to say, okay, I've got it. Then he comes up and, and tells everybody, well, I'm not going to use the speech that my folks wrote, but actually he's got it all up here. And it's amazing when we hear the things that, that we've written that, that just come out without it being written in front of him. And again, I, I interact uh, directly with the communication staff. You know, one of the things I do is I get a lot of phone calls. Uh, this is a 24 by 7 job. And first of all, I'll tell you, our staff is um, seven, uh, seven of, of them plus me, and they're all a bunch of millennials. And I tell people that millennials get a bad rap because our staff is, is dedicated 24-7. Uh, you know, if there's something on the weekend or something at night, we text out or send out an email and they're, they're quick to respond. So I have to, have to say that uh, we've, got a, we've got a great staff, very dedicated staff. But second, um, the governor has my phone number. And my, my wife Tina says that uh, this should have a red case on it because she calls it the bat phone. Um, I'll give you an example. I was at our church Christmas party back in December. The governor called me five times mm -hmm. with five different things. And uh, the next day, we were at, a, at an um, occasion at the executive mansion. First thing the governor did was come up to me and hug me and say, I'm sorry I called, so, called you so many times last night. I'm like, well, that's okay. Then he looked at my wife and he said, I'm sorry I called him so many times last night. And my wife kind of joked and she said, well, you know, governor, I was beginning to wonder because I hear him on the phone at night and not really sure that the governor didn't miss a beat. He says, yeah, just like Jake at State Farm, right? <laughs> so so that's, that's, what, that's, what, uh, that's what we deal with. And, you know, somebody asked me what happens when uh, I go on vacation. I take my phone and I answer it. Uh, and when it's the governor, I say, I'll take care of it. And then we take care of it. But I do get to do some fun things. 
And uh, so I thought I'd share with you just um, one of the, the fun series of things I got to do earlier this year. Uh, you know, you always hear about governors making wagers uh, for sporting events, football games or championships and things like that. Well, back when the Carolina Panthers were involved in uh, their championship playoffs, we got involved in doing wagers with the various governors. Well, that fell on me. The governor pretty much said, you come up with the wagers, you make the, you make the deal with the, with the other governor's office. So we had done, you know, back during college, we had done um, a couple of bets with the governor of South Carolina with, that involved barbecue. And I said, well, I don't really want to do barbecue, but I really don't want to um, have the governor in the opponent of, of the opposing team's jersey. So realized that um, the governor of Arizona, first, first team we were playing was uh, the Arizona Cardinals. Governor of Arizona has a dog. And of course, Governor McCrory has a dog. Mo, for those of you who don't know, Mo is a rescue dog. And uh, literally, the governor and his wife rescued Mo just hours before Mo was going to be put down. So Mo is the first dog. So we decided we would do a wager between the first dogs. The losing dog would have to wear the jersey of the other team. So there's uh, Arizona's first dog, Woody. Belongs to Governor Doug Ducey. And as you can see, uh, Woody does not look real thrilled about wearing a Carolina Panthers jersey. But um, Governor Ducey was a, was a good sport. Uh, again, that's Mo on the other side. And um, so we got through that one. So then uh, the next wager was with uh, the Seattle Seahawks and Washington Governor Jay Inslee. So I decided that time we would just do uh, a, a thing of North Carolina products. So we decided that we would do some um, North Carolina peanuts, some North Carolina barbecue sauce, and uh, I'm look away at me. Um, some Krispy Kreme donuts and a case of cheer wine. I have to tell you, cheer wine really threw the people in Washington State. Uh, I had to explain to them that it was a soft drink. Uh, so we went through there. And um, they decided that they were going to wager um, some actual wine from some Washington wineries. Also, um, some caramel corn, which apparently built caramel corn in Washington. Okay, it's, apparently it's a big deal out there. And uh, then a seven pack of uh, local IPA uh, brews. So uh, that was our winnings from that game. Governor McCrory doesn't drink, so he passed these on to Coach Rivera uh, with the Panthers for, uh, for this win. So then we get into Super Bowl Sunday. Now, I didn't get to go to the Super Bowl, but I had to line up all of the governor's interviews for the Super Bowl. And all, of course, all the North Carolina stations were out there since the Panthers were in the Super Bowl. So what we had to do was basically all the TV stations were set up on this three-story tall scaffolding and basically were in numbered spaces. So I basically had, had told the governor's security, you know, you're going to go to CWBTV in space number six, and you're going to go to WREL in space number 30, and just up and down. So you can see the governor had a great time with um, a lot of the local media Super Bowl Sunday. So I had uh, worked really hard, again, to keep the, the governor out of um, a Denver Broncos jersey in case the Panthers lost the game. So the governor and I talked a little bit about what we wanted to do, and he said, um, I tell you what, I want to do something for a food bank. Why don't we see if we can set up some sort of wager that the, the losing state has to donate some food to another food bank. So I started thinking and, and realized that um, a person who used to work with me uh, handles publicity for uh, Butterball. So I gave her a call. I said, well, would, would Butterball, based in Garner, would Butterball be willing to uh, donate some turkey product in case we um, you know, lose the game? She said, yeah, I'll tell you what, we'll do, we'll do 50 cases of turkey burgers and we'll do 50 cases of turkey sausages to food banks in Colorado. So then the governor said, well, you know, I also want to help animal shelters because, uh, because of Mo and because of the fact he's a rescue dog. So we also said, we'll, we'll donate some dog food to some animal shelters. So we got the, uh, the governor of Denver to agree to do that. So I'm saying, great, I've, left, I've kept the governor out of her jersey again. Until this moment, what happened was um, the two governors went on live on Fox News Super Bowl Sunday. And so they're talking back and forth, and the anchor says, Okay, governors, let's do a wager like right on the spot now for on the game. So 
Governor Hickenlooper was first, and he says, well, I'm, I'll wear a Carolina Panthers jersey, and I'll dye part of my hair blue. So then Governor McCrory says, okay, well, I'll wear a Broncos jersey, and I'll wear an orange earring. I said, great. So thank you, Governor. Anyway, but um, he did, we did manage to, to see that bet. But what you may, or may not remember is that after the Super Bowl, and we did lose the game, after the Super Bowl, the governor's car was in an auto accident. That used to be a Crown Victoria um, California Highway Patrol car. The governor was riding with the California Highway Patrol after the game, and uh, they were rear-ended. They were in stop-and-go traffic, and a car hit them going about 50 miles an hour. Um, the governor was not injured. Uh, one of his security, security was sitting on the driver's side of the back seat that took most of the impact. He had a gash on his head. Uh, the governor was not hurt, but the governor calls me at 1.30 in the morning and says, I've been in a wreck, and we need to get a press release out, letting everybody know I'm okay. Uh, because we're already starting to get you know, inquiries from news media out in California hearing that the, the governor of North Carolina had been in an accident. So again, bragging about my staff, I texted one of my staff and said, are you still up? She said, yes. I said, okay, we need to get a press release out. And so we had a press release out by two in the morning, uh, thanks to my staff. But as you can imagine, it was, uh, it was big news, especially in uh, Colorado and California here in North Carolina, that the governor of North Carolina had, uh, had been in an accident. So it's just another one of those unexpected parts of my job. But as I said, what we did is we, we ended up putting this wager together. And um, I, you know, I had not found a source for the dog food when we made the wager. But interestingly enough, you saw that Fox News interview. Uh, it just so happened that the PR person for Mars Incorporated, uh, which owns IAM's dog food, was watching. And I don't know if you realize, but IAM's dog food is made in Henderson, North Carolina. And so they called me and said, we'll donate two tons of dog food to animal shelters in Colorado. And we'll also do two tons of dog food for animal shelters here in North Carolina. So we had some fun with it. We decided we were going to shoot a little video message to uh, Governor Hickenlooper uh, at the mansion. So Valerie, if you don't mind starting that now, I'll show you the real quick video we did. All right, let's get this over with. Give me the jersey, Hickenlooper. Why can't you have a simple name like McCrory in Colorado? All right, Governor Hickenlooper, I'm wearing the jersey number one. I want to congratulate the Denver Broncos for a great Super Bowl victory. I predicted 33 to 10. I only picked the wrong team and I only missed the score by a few points. But uh, anyway, congratulations. This is a great Super Bowl. Uh, the Carolina Panthers are going to come back, but we're all winners with the Super Bowl because we're going to help feed the hungry in both Colorado and in North Carolina and also help our pets, which our First Lady of North Carolina will enjoy immensely. Let's go. How y'all doing, Ron? Good. Caroline, how are you doing? Governor Hickenlooper, I told you we're all winners with the Super Bowl. Even though the Denver Broncos won the game, both Colorado and North Carolina wins also because we're pleased to report that Garner, North Carolina-based Butterball is shipping 50 cases of turkey burgers and 50 cases of turkey sausages to the Food Bank of the Rockies in your town of Denver, Colorado. Where you, when you were mayor of Denver, I was mayor of Charlotte. And now we're friends again, being governor of Colorado and being governor of North Carolina. So the people in the Rockies are gonna benefit from this great turkey burgers and turkey sausages because North Carolina's a winner also. Butterball is donating 50 cases of food to three food pantries across North Carolina. The first food pantry is the Second Harvest Food Bank in Charlotte, and also the Durham Rescue Mission in Durham, which my wife works with tremendously, and also the Raleigh Rescue Mission in Raleigh, North Carolina, our state capital. So we're all winners, but that's not all, Governor. There's more winners. We also want to help the dog lovers in both Colorado and in North Carolina. And you know, Ann and I are big dog lovers, and I know you are too. And Coach Rivera and his wife Stephanie are huge dog lovers. So we wanted to make sure we didn't forget about the animal shelters in both Colorado and in North Carolina. So IMS, which is a Mars Incorporated company, is sending two tons of IMS dog food to animal shelters across Colorado, and also two tons of IMS dog food to three pet pantries here in North Carolina. Paco, appreciate you very much. And in fact, he works in 
the Henderson, North Carolina plant in which this dog food is made. We're proud to have you here to help animals in both Colorado and in North Carolina. What do you say? Next year's next year's Super Bowl. Go, go Panthers. Go Panthers. Go Panthers. All right, Governor. I'm here with Teddy and Addie, two rescue dogs that members of my family have just rescued in the past year. And we're proud to have especially Teddy here, just rescued a couple weeks ago. And I just want to let you know we're coming back next year. And I'll also see you in Washington, D.C. I'll bring your jersey back to Washington, D.C. this coming week. And I'll wear it at the National Governors Conference with an earring. I just don't shop at places that uh, sell that kind of thing. So, But I'll come through on that part of the promise. And again, Governor Hickenlooper, to everyone in Colorado, congratulations. But we will be back. Hey, enough of this daggum jersey. What do we say? One, two, three. Go Panthers! Go Panthers. at least try to have fun uh, in the governor's office. Just real quickly, the results of those donations, this was uh, the Durham Rescue Mission decided they were gonna do a governor's dinner with uh, the food that was donated to them from Butterball, as well as some other things. They brought in the chef from the Washington Duke Inn. They did a white tablecloth, white linen tablecloth dinner for 400 homeless people uh, with the food that uh, was donated on behalf of, um, of North Carolina by, the, by, the, um, by Butterball. So again, just uh, just one of the lighter moments. Um, you know, things are serious enough, but I, I I told the governor I think I'm getting out of the wagering business. So <laughs> so we'll see. But again, thank you so much for having me, and um, love to talk to folks afterwards. So thanks so much.